How do the biggest pandemics in history compare with the coronavirus? Here are the 15 biggest pandemics in human history. Number 15, the Black Death, 1347 through 1351, 200 million deaths. The Black Death was by far the most deadly pandemic in human history after being responsible for an estimated 200 million deaths between 1347 and 1351. It's thought to have been caused by the Yersinia pestis bacterium, which causes three different types of plague and originated in Central Asia before traveling along the Silk Road and spreading across Europe. Those who were infected developed buboes, which are large black growths in the groin, neck, and armpits, and died within a matter of days. It killed somewhere between 30 and 60% of the people living on the continent, and it would take 200 years before population numbers would fully recover. Number 14, Asian Flu, 1957 through 1958, 1.1 million deaths. The Asian Flu pandemic took hold in 1957, having originated in China and is thought to have begun in wild ducks before it combined with a human strain and spread like wildfire. Within a matter of months, it had spread to Singapore, Hong Kong, and then the US, and killed at least 1.1 million people around the world. It was one of the first pandemics of the modern age, and was so serious that American broadcasters produced public service announcements to encourage citizens to be vaccinated to help prevent its spread. More than 116,000 US citizens were killed by it before it dissipated, and it remains one of the deadliest pandemics to hit the country. Number 13, the seven cholera outbreaks, 1817 through 1923, six million deaths. Cholera is caused by the infection of the small intestine by certain strains of bacteria and causes extreme dehydration, which can lead to sunken eyes, cold skin, and in some cases, death. It's associated with poor water hygiene. And since 1817, there have been seven major cholera pandemics, which together have killed as many as six million people. Very few places in the world have avoided being affected by cholera at some point, and once it takes over, it's disastrous. In the first pandemic between 1817 and 1824, 100,000 people were killed on the island of Java alone, and more than 150,000 Americans were killed during the two pandemics between 1832 and 1849. Number 12, smallpox, 1520 to present. 350 plus million deaths. Smallpox was one of the most devastating illnesses in history and caused various symptoms such as a fever, sores in the mouth, and the visually horrific rash, bumps, and scars across the whole body. It's thankfully now been eradicated but has been a scourge of human civilization since it first emerged more than 10,000 years ago. During the 1700s, it's thought to have killed 400,000 Europeans every year, including five monarchs, and was responsible for more than a third cases of blindness. In the 1950s, more than 50 million new infections occurred each year, of which two million died. And throughout the 20th century, it's believed to have killed as many as 500 million people, according to some estimates. Number 11, yellow fever, the 1800s, 150,000 deaths. Yellow fever is a viral disease that's transmitted by mosquitoes and causes jaundice, which can make people's skin turn yellow. It has a relatively high mortality rate too, and in the late 1800s, it was responsible for causing a pandemic that killed more than 150,000 people. One of the worst places that was hit was Philadelphia. With a population of 50,000 people in 1793, the arrival of yellow fever saw at least 10% of them dying within three months. A further 20,000 fled the city and took the disease with them elsewhere in the U.S. And it remains one of the most severe outbreaks in the country's history. Number 10, Russian flu, 1889 through 1890, 1 million deaths. The Russian flu pandemic that began in 1889 is the earliest known instance of a mass outbreak of the influenza virus. It was first detected in St. Petersburg in December of that year, and within four months, thanks to extensive transport links, it had spread throughout the Northern Hemisphere. It had reached the U.S. by mid-January, and took only five weeks between the first report of a case in a region and it reaching its peak mortality. By the time it relented, it had killed more than one million people across the world, and in many ways gave citizens a glimpse as to what would become the cause of the greatest loss of human life over the next century.
Tests on samples that remain from the time have found the strain of influenza to be H3N8, which would later return a few years later in 1898, and is still around today in wild animals such as birds, horses, dogs, and seals. Number nine, the third plague, 1855 through 1960, 12 million plus deaths. There have been several plague pandemics throughout history, and while the Black Death was the second and most deadly, the third time it spread on a mass scale was also responsible for a considerable number of deaths worldwide. It originated in Yunnan, China in 1855, after land was disturbed where the virus had laid dormant. Within a few years, it had spread to every continent, and outbreaks continued all the way until 1960. India was the worst hit country where more than 10 million people died from its effects, while China also felt the brunt of this pandemic with 2 million deaths. Unusually, this pandemic has actually been linked to two different emergences of the plague. The first was bubonic and was transported around the world by rats and cargo on ships that were breeding grounds for the fleas that carried it. And the second that was a pneumonic strain that could be transmitted by coughs and sneezes. Number eight, Ebola, 2014 through 2016, 11.3 thousand deaths. While Ebola has been known about since 1976 and often triggers small outbreaks, the Western Africa Ebola virus epidemic that began in 2014 was by far the most widespread emergence of the disease in history. It began in Guinea of that year and soon entered Liberia and Sierra Leone, with smaller outbreaks in several other countries. Frighteningly, this strain of the virus had a 58% mortality rate for those that were admitted to the hospital. And by the time it was under control in 2016, it had been responsible for the deaths of 11,323 people. The particular concern with Ebola is that it leaves many survivors with long-term health conditions that need to be continually treated, and can even hide away in the body to re-emerge several years later. This can affect either the carrier or intimate partners of theirs, so medics are keeping a close eye on the region just in case it re-emerges again. Number seven. Japanese smallpox, 735 through 737, one million deaths. As Japan began to interact more with the countries on the mainland, they opened up new trade routes, but also exposed themselves to illnesses that they had never experienced before. In 735, this would have disastrous consequences when the smallpox virus made its way to the islands. It first took hold in the city of Dazaifu from a fisherman who had been struck on the Korean peninsula. And since it was so contagious, it wasn't long until it had spread across the entire northern Japanese island of Kyushu. Within a couple of years, it had reached the rest of Japan and would change society forever. Over the two years, about one million people were killed, which at the time represented about a third of the country's population. This had a devastating impact on the economy and infrastructure and affected people in all levels of society. Over the next few hundred years, smaller outbreaks took place too, but eventually it had become so commonplace that its symptoms and death rates became far less severe. Number six, Plague of Justinian, 541 through 542, 50 million deaths. The Plague of Justinian was the first recorded instance of a plague pandemic and struck the Byzantine Empire from the year 541. The focal point was the capital, Constantinople, but all the ports and cities around the Mediterranean Sea were affected. This outbreak was named after Justinian I, who was the emperor at the time that it first emerged. He himself actually caught the disease, but was one of the fortunate ones who managed to recover. It was caused by the same bacterium that would become responsible for the Black Death, and had just as bad a mortality rate. Estimates of the number of deaths it caused vary, but if you take into account the number of smaller outbreaks that occurred over the next few hundred years, the final toll is believed to be somewhere between 50 and 100 million people. Number five, swine flu, 2009 through 2010, 200,000 plus deaths. In 2009, an influenza pandemic spread across the world after having first been described in April of that year. It was known as swine flu because it had developed from a merger of strains from birds, humans, and pigs. The unusual thing about this strain was that it didn't affect elderly people more than younger ones and seemed to be indiscriminate as to who it could infect. In fact, children were found to have no immunity to it at all, but people over 60 had a slight immunity because of its similarity to a strain of seasonal flu that had spread around the world several decades ago. 
Statistics about the impact of the swine flu are hard to know for certain. Some estimates would suggest as much as 21% of the world's population contracted swine flu during the year it was around, which accounts for as many as 1.4 billion people. Fortunately, the mortality rate was quite low, but this still translated to somewhere between 150,000 and 500,000 deaths, with most of those being in Africa and Asia. Those who became infected usually exhibited strong flu-like symptoms, but for a small percentage, it would lead to the development of more serious complications like pneumonia or acute respiratory distress syndrome. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe to Top Fives with notifications on. Number four, the Antonine Plague, 165 through 180, five million deaths, which ended the Roman Empire. We often learn that the fall of the Roman Empire was due to it becoming too bloated and susceptible to the growing barbarian and Gothic armies. But the truth behind the eventual collapse of one of history's most important civilizations could well have been a pandemic that swept across the region between the years 165 and 180. Known as the Antonin Plague, historians still aren't sure exactly what disease caused it, but the leading suspects are either smallpox or measles. It's thought that as the military deployed to further realms that some soldiers had caught it while in the Middle East and brought it with them when they returned home. It struck in two waves, the first in the year 165 and the second nine years later. According to reports from the time, at its peak there were more than 2,000 people dying per day in Rome. And based on figures of illness, this represented a 25% mortality rate. Some areas lost more than a third of their population and the Roman army suffered huge losses. In total, around 5 million people are believed to have died because of this pandemic, and it would change the geopolitical structure of the region forever. Without an army to protect their interests, the Roman authorities were unable to support the economy in the way they had done before, and the emperor, Lucius Verus, is thought to have died from the plague himself during the outbreak. Records from elsewhere also show it spread across Europe, and probably China too, so it's quite possible that the worldwide death toll was far higher. Number three, 17th century Great Plagues, the 1600s, three million deaths. The 17th century was a dangerous time for residents in Europe, not just because of the social conditions, but because the plague that had torn through the population during the Black Death was making a comeback. There were continual outbreaks throughout the century, and surprisingly, research has found that it was caused by exactly the same strain, seemingly having hidden away for 300 years before its re-emergence. The Great Plagues devastated countries, and there was very little anyone could do about it. In 1665, it spread through London and killed more than 15% of residents before it dissipated, and authorities had no choice but to bury the dead in large plague pits. The location of these is not fully known, and occasionally building works uncover another one. It's fortunate that medical research has a far better idea of how to deal with the plague now, because there are still small outbreaks around the world. And if it's able to stay viable for a number of centuries, there's always the risk that uncovering a burial site like this could release it into high-density populations once more. It's noted, though, that the once harmless bacteria mutated to contain one extra protein that turned it into something so deadly. And all it would take was another mutation like this, and even we, in modern times, would struggle to get a handle on it. Number two, Spanish flu. 1918 through 1919, 50 million deaths. There are still some people alive who lived through the Spanish flu that began spreading in 1918, which makes it the deadliest pandemic in living memory. This strain of influenza started to emerge in the latter stages of the First World War, and to prevent fears from inhibiting the war effort, authorities kept details secret from the population until it became too serious to ignore. This meant that the ordinary citizens in the UK, US, Germany, and France had no idea what was going on. But in Spain, which was neutral at the time, papers were allowed to freely report what was happening. With the illness of King Alfonso XIII, it began to seem as if Spain was being particularly hard hit by the pandemic, and is why it had become known as the Spanish flu. It's not exactly clear where it originated from, and there are three main theories that it began in a UK military camp in France, that because of the squalid conditions gave it the opportunity to mutate, that it started in Kansas in the US based on evidence that a wave of the flu may have spread there before it was seen elsewhere, or that it came from China, where very few people died of it, and it may be a sign that the population already had a level of immunity against it. <laughs> 
Recent research has shown it wasn't many more deadly than other strains of influenza, but that the conditions people were living in in the wake of the war meant that the symptoms developed to a more deadly stage. Young adults were disproportionately affected, seemingly because it triggered a response in their stronger immune systems. And there's evidence that most died from a bacterial superinfection that was able to take hold due to poor hygiene and malnourishment. Between the beginning of 1918 and the end of 1919, Spanish flu is believed to have infected a quarter of the world's population, so around 500 million people. And with a mortality rate of around 10%, this translated to at least 50 million deaths, although some estimates of this figure should be closer to 100 million. This means it was responsible for more deaths than the whole of the First World War. And if you take the higher figure, more than World War II as well. Number one, HIV, AIDS, 1981 to present, 35 million deaths. Human immunodeficiency virus infection, or HIV for short, was first detected in the early 1980s and has since gone on to be one of the most harmful pandemics in our planet's history. The virus is thought to have developed in non-human primates before making the jump to people and is spread through contact with blood and semen. At first, the infection presents with influenza-like symptoms, but can eventually lead to AIDS, where the body struggles to fend off any other infections. It's believed that at least 35 million people have died as a result of contracting HIV, and in 2018, figures suggest almost 40 million people worldwide were living with it of whom 770,000 people perished. Unfortunately, for a long time, sufferers were discriminated against rather than treated as they should have been like other illnesses. But in recent years, the tide has finally turned and there's hope that it will one day be eradicated for good. And COVID-19, 2019, 17,000 deaths and rising. In late 2019, a coronavirus, which is a strain of SARS, began to emerge in Asia while initial reports suggested a low mortality rate of around 1%, it became clear over the following weeks that it's highly contagious. Despite fears over the preceding decades of something like this happening, it's the first major pandemic of recent times, and access to social media has helped warn the world like never before. It may be many years before we know the full cost of the current pandemic, but the important thing to remember is that things like this have happened throughout history. And no matter how serious they become, they will eventually end, and we as a civilization will endure. Subscribe to Top Fives for more and check out some of our other popular videos.